the Honourable Leader of the New Democratic Party. Mr. Speaker, the, the piece of legislation before us is entitled An Act to Amend the Nova Scotia Power Privatization Act and the Nova Scotia Power Reorganization Act. But I think in the interests of truthfulness, the legislation before us might better be called the Have You Ever Got Some Gall Act? Or perhaps an act that takes an awful lot of nerve. If I were a, a power company that had taken $3 billion in profits from Nova Scotia since its privatization in 1992, and if I were a subsidiary of a parent company whose CEO makes $6.2 million a year, and if I were operating in a jurisdiction with the lowest median income in Canada, and the worst child poverty in the country, a jurisdiction where 38% of the population report that it is a very real struggle for them to pay their power bills. If that were true of me, then I'm not sure that I would have the nerve. I'm not sure that I would have the gall to come to the government of that province uh, and say that I wanted that government to pass legislation removing restrictions on the international ownership of my shares. And if I did that in that situation, Mr. Speaker, if I were to summon that amount of gall to make that request of the government of such a jurisdiction, if I were to summon the, the nerve to tell the government order, of such please, a Order, please. Order, please. The Honourable Leader of the New Democratic Party has the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, if I were in that situation and I had the gall uh, to come and make that request to the government of such a jurisdiction, or I had the nerve uh, uh, to do that, I would fully expect that that government would say to me under those circumstances, well, you know what, power utility? Actually, right now is not all that great a time. Actually, right now, power utility, could you maybe wait till later? It's just not economically speaking, from the point of view of the lives of our people, it's just not perfect timing. Well, that's not at all what has happened. What has happened, rather, is that Amira has said to the Liberal government, jump, and the Liberal government has said, how high? Amira has said to the Liberal government, dance, and the Liberal government has begun to hop around. Well, there are different names we could have for this piece of legislation, Mr. Speaker. Perhaps also we could call it the, the False and Hollow Act. Because the, the arguments that the government has raised in favor of this piece of legislation certainly fall within the false and hollow description. The minister, for example, has spoken about how Nova Scotia Power slash EMIRA is the only utility in North America that faces restrictions on international capitalization. But this is to obscure the irrelevance uh, of North America outside Canada to the consideration that's before us, as it is to pass over the fact that in Canada there is, after all, only one province outside of Nova Scotia, Alberta, where power generation, transmission and distribution are entirely in private hands. <coughs> or perhaps we might, as we think about this act, we might maybe want to call it also the nothing times nothing equals nothing act. Since, what does this bill anticipate that the customers of Nova Scotia Power will be receiving, as my colleague has just pointed out, in return for the government's acceding to this request slash demand from EMIRA? Are there going to be investments in energy infrastructure towards 100% renewables in Nova Scotia? Will there be investments in the direction of a strengthened grid? Or in cutting down on the frequency of power outages? Or in reducing power rates to the people of the province? The answer is that there will be nothing times nothing times nothing, which will equal the nothing that Amira will be providing to the people of Nova Scotia in return for the governments of Nova Scotia's fulfilling their demand slash request. Or maybe we would want to call this piece of legislation the Totally Unnecessary Act. Since the legislation before us, it, it lifts EMIRA's present limit of 25% of shares held outside the country, although EMIRA has never in its history reached, in fact, that limit. Equally unnecessary is the minister's contention 
that the legislation provides for maintaining Amira's headquarters in Nova Scotia. That's unnecessary because that's already a provision that's contained in the unamended act. But perhaps maybe what we should do is just sum all of that up, Mr. Speaker, and put forward a, a, a renewed name for this legislation. Let's just call it the Very Bad Judgment Act. It forgets this piece of legislation that we need a government to side with the people of Nova Scotia, not with the corporation through which $3 billion in profits has been taken from them since 1992. The legislation forgets that the government's primary loyalty needs to be to the people who work and struggle and pay the power bills in Nova Scotia, not to the shareholders of Amira. The legislation forgets that the government needs to attend to the multiple economic injuries of a population with the lowest income in the country and not be pouring salt into their wounds. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.